Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. And I'm going to spend some time with Ben Walters. And uh, he's with a group called the Pinkston Group and uh, the 2016 Committee. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, small business issues and, uh, you know, uh, the uh, phenomena, uh, phenomena known as uh, uh, Ben Carson and his uh, rise and uh, a lot, lot more here on this segment. And uh, glad to have you on the program today, Ben. Thanks for having me, Kevin. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have we had you on the program before? This is my first time, actually. Well, uh, talk about the 2016 committee. Yeah, absolutely. So about two and a half years ago, I started working on fundraising for the, at the time, it was the National Draft Ben Carson Super PAC. And this draft movement, of course, um, it, it caught fire. It was something that uh, it was completely unprecedented, uh, the way it caught fire. Carson announced, and we since become the 2016 committee. From the start, the super PAC, it's always been different than the traditional model for super PACs. Uh, we've always been focused on building a grassroots army of small donors, $50, to- $50 at a time. But we figured, why stop there? The 2016 committee has the unique ability as a super PAC to accept business and corporate contributions. And while a lot of super PACs are out there looking for the million-dollar donations from Wall Street's hedge funds, we figured, why not look for some $100 donations from the Main Street diners and barber shops, doctor's offices, and everything in between? Mm-hmm. So, so far we've signed up everything from a bed and breakfast in Ketchikan, Alaska, to a motorcycle repair shop in Florida for Ben Carson. Yep. Talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, how much have you guys raised? So far uh, with this program, it's about three weeks old, and we signed up about 250 small businesses and raised about thirty thousand uh, dollars, primarily a hundred bucks, normally at a time. Yeah, it sounds like that. The math uh, bears that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, talk about uh, administratively, what costs are involved for, for this? Yeah, administratively, uh, the biggest cost uh, is just what we're paying for the campaign materials that we're sending businesses that are signing up. Um, businesses that donate a hundred dollars receive. Uh, everything you could really ask for if you're a small business trying to get the word out about Ben Carson uh, to your customers and uh, your employees. Uh, we send notepads for phone messages, a poster for a storefront window, Carson brochures for lobbies and waiting rooms, and lots of other goodies. Yeah, very, very good. Um, I, I, gotta, I have to admit, by the way, I have an article this week, uh, actually last week, uh, in uh, Huffington Post on Ben Carson and the rise of Ben Carson. And, and uh, I have argued all along that Ben Carson could not be successful for two primary reasons, one of which is that he had no political experience whatsoever, um, and the other one being the fact that he was a black conservative. And although the media is very tolerant of minorities, they're not tolerant of conservative minorities. It's almost like uh, if you are a minority, black or female, Hispanic or whatever, mm-hmm. you couldn't even have the right to vote if it wasn't for progressive policies. Therefore, you're, you're kind of like biting the hand that feeds you. That kind of arrogance has existed in the media. Uh, but something's happened. Something has changed in 2016. I think the uh, media inserting itself so often, the media driving who it likes for, and, and shooting down who it doesn't like, they have essentially become a non-player in the political process today. It's phenomenal to see what happens because particularly on the right, particularly on the GOP side, no one trusts the media. And so, and, and it's just one mm-hmm. more big institution for people to disdain. They disdain government as a big institution. They disdain the media as a big institution. So all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, this man's become the perfect candidate. And the more the media were to criticize him, more likely he'll go up in the polls. Uh, you know, I've told people, I think a, a, a one-minute-long segment on CNN where they're just bashing Ben Carson is probably better for fundraising and Carson's poll numbers than a minute paid ad on CNN uh, for that exact point that you're talking about. The distrust as a, is, is at, uh, of the media is at the highest levels I, I know I've ever seen. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's unbelievable. It's an amazing phenomenon. So, you know, and in, in the end, I don't don't conclude anything because I've been involved in politics since, uh, well, 79, uh, before I could even vote. Mm -hmm. In 1980, I was a uh, coordinator for students for Reagan. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I, I'm not new to this. I've been a campaign manager uh, and consultant up to U.S. Senate campaigns and gov gubernatorial campaigns. And so I always thought mm -hmm. I was fairly politically savvy, right. but I'm not. I know you were involved with the Republican Revolution in, in 94. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wrote a book that a lot of candidates, uh, 70 candidates, campaigned heavily using a book I wrote called Empowerment to the People. So I always thought I knew a little bit, but I don't know anything anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole rule books have been changed entirely, and that was the conclusion of my article called The Rise of Ben Carson over there at Huffington Post. Just put in Kevin Price in Huffington Post and you'll see it. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, all, all bets are off because no one can really tell what's going to happen with this. But it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, you know, and of the independents, I'm way, he's by far, when I say independents, the ones without any political experience, the big three uh, who fall in that category, I'm by far more comfortable with Ben Carson than I am with Carly or Donald, that's for sure. Right, right. I mean, there's very, very little. I, I, I don't know if there's anything in Ben Carson's background um, that, that you can really use against him. And, and that's not always the case with, I know that there's a lot of things that Trump and Fiorina are being attacked for as far as uh, their background goes. Yeah, Fiorina's background as a... As a in corporate life is a complete unmitigated disaster, and Donald Trump in every aspect of his life, uh, you know, is a disaster. You know, talk about tone deaf. You said during the interview, and he said, yeah, I had it pretty rough. You know, when I started my business, I had to get a million-dollar loan for my dad. I mean, are you talking about I mean, it's like uh, like <laughs> Jimmy Fallon says, you know, when people get a genie, the thing they ask for is a million dollars. A million dollars is not a small amount of money. You talk about tone deaf, you know, and you take someone like Ben Carson, who really literally rose out of poverty in one of the roughest cities in America uh, to become one of the world's greatest neurosurgeons and did things that no one had ever done before in that arena. And, uh, you know, and, and his sensibilities, uh, his uh, address at the prayer breakfast of 2013, one of the most memorable speeches ever heard. Mm -hmm. and it was really delightful to have um, Barack Obama sitting right next to him, essentially, while he was giving that speech. Uh, he, he does. Yeah. He brings he brings a lot uh, to the uh, picture. But you've got to be delighted to, to see where he is right now. It's been incredible from that moment on, and, and a lot of, I think it was called the, the longest 27 minutes of Obama's life. Uh, from that moment on, it just exploded, and, and nobody could have ever predicted it. I certainly could have never predicted it. I, I mean, it's, it's an unprecedented thing that's happening. I, I, ben Carson's an unprecedented candidate. I think you hit it right on the head. I, one of the biggest appeals that he has to people is the fact that he's lived at every socioeconomic level. And he didn't get a million-dollar loan from his father. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's one of those things that appeals to people the most. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not even sure what role his father had in his life at that point. I'm, I'm not that familiar with the story. I, I, I just know it was extraordinarily he, he, difficult. He never knew his father, yeah. yeah. That's right. And so uh, he had no father from whom to get a million-dollar loan, and not even Monopoly money. And so uh, it's incredible yeah. uh, indeed. Um, you know, and, and uh, in the radio field, I try not to overtly endorse candidates, uh, but I certainly am sympathetic to him. Uh, I will tell you I'm a Ted Cruz fan for obvious reasons. And frankly, growing, I think he probably performed the best in the last debate. Uh, I, you couldn't help but be impressed for, for the way he held the media accountable. And that's exactly right. what people – I really think people were waiting for, for one of them to hold the media accountable. Uh, you right. know, and so uh, it, it seems it seemed funny to me. It took a candidate this long to realize how much disdain there is in the GOP base towards the media. You think they would have tapped into it before the third debate? Yeah, you really saw the ultimate indictment on the media bias in that debate. And Cruz certainly got the ball rolling, and from there, you saw a lot of that disdain come out. Yep. And I hope they make they make changes before the next debate. I hope that was a little bit of a wake up call, and 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 there's some substantive changes, and not just opening and closing statements, but some serious substantive changes before the next debate. Yeah, absolutely. All right, final thoughts before I let you go. Yeah, for sure. I know um, 
I, uh, I, I just wanted to give your Houston audience uh, the, the website, hopefully, and, and invite them to come on board and become one of our uh, small businesses for Ben. Um, they can go to winbenwin. Uh, dot org, and then right underneath our Iowa caucus clock, you can scroll right down and click to the Carson Yellow pages, and that's where we list all of our small businesses for Ben by city and state, and we'd certainly love to bring some Houston businesses on board. 2016committee.org. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Kevin. You bet. When we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here shows up over there at usdataReview.com, and you are listening to The Price of Business.